What's up everyone? So today I'm out at Maserati Lotus Greenville where I just drove a 2017 Jaguar F-Type R. So I will have that video down in the description below. The next vehicle that I'm taking out is a 2016 Maserati Gran Turismo. I can't wait to check out this car. I really like how they look. I've never really been able to actually drive one. So I'll go ahead and unlock it here and we'll just take a sneak peek at the interior. It has a solid red leather interior. This does have back seats, so it'll be interesting to see if I can fit back there or not. A lot of carbon fiber on the inside, and I love the column mounted paddle shifters. I can't wait to use those. Uh, so we're gonna get a cold start of this, and then we'll get it out on the road. <laughs> Alright, so firing up the Gran Turismo, I'm already going to put it into sport mode as you guys heard from that startup. I hope it sounded as good from back there. I like all of the carbon fiber on it so far. It looks really cool with the red leather everywhere. It's on the door panel and on the dash here too. It is kind of interesting to see that it has a dial keypad for the phone or it has built in Bluetooth, but you're able to kind of punch it in there which is kind of cool if you can remember somebody's phone number. So first up, I'm gonna talk about what this car costs brand new. Again, this is a 2016 Gran Turismo. I'm not sure of all the options that it had from the factory, but this was about 136,000 brand new. Right now it has 19,851 miles, and it's for sale on Maserati Lotus Greenville's website for about 71,000. So it's, it's had a pretty good price depreciation uh, for being a 2016 but again with 20,000 miles you're not really sacrificing a whole lot than it was brand new so if you're looking for something around that price range I would consider this it's a pretty cool car so far I'm gonna go ahead and pop it into manual mode here just to get a little taste of it so obviously that's nothing crazy we're still letting the car warm up I love how large these column mounted shifters are. I just think it's a cooler design than the steering wheel mounted ones simply because two going around turns they're always going to be fixed. You know exactly where they are. All right so now we're going to head outside and just take a quick walk around of the exterior just showing you guys how this car looks. I'm going to start up front. This does have LED headlights. You can see Maserati is printed on the top section there. Gives it a really nice touch and then of course it has the Trident logo in the center as do all Maseratis. This one has forward sensors and the air inlets on each side to provide more cooling to the engine. I do like the split design down on the lower splitter here. You can just kind of see the, the two angles on each side and then the middle section is black there. I think that looks really cool. And then you have the lines coming down the center of the hood there and then pretty big wheel arches. So it's nice to see that indention on the hood. Just gives it a more flared look with the fender flares which is pretty cool to see. This has 20 inch wheels that are finished off in black with a nice five spoke design. They're wrapped in Pirelli P0 summer tires with functional air vents behind them, which looks pretty cool. But what do you guys think of the overall style to this car? I really do like the shape of it. The proportions is really nice. Doesn't have too long of a front hood and then the just the shape of it. It's not too bubbly or anything like that. I think it has a really, really good side profile look to it. And then when we come to the back with sensors and then the dual exhaust, which we'll get a rev here now that the car has warmed up. <laughs> Looking at the storage space, for a four-seater, it's probably not the largest compartment. You can see my camera bag in there for reference, so you could fit a couple bags in the back here, but you probably wouldn't be fitting two people comfortably in the back seats as we'll get to here later. But that's pretty much the walk around of this car. Comment down below, you guys, what do you think? Let's head up front again to look at the hood. And I'm just gonna pull on this lever here to pop the front latch. Here we go, this is the 4.7 liter V8 paired to the six speed transmission as you guys saw with the paddle shifters. This makes 554 horsepower and 384 pound feet of torque. 
This does weigh a good bit. It's at 4,500 pounds. It can do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds with a top speed of 187. So it definitely has the performance aspects to back it up. So heading inside again, it, of course it has that solid leather with the black stitching. Same as the F-Type that I did. Again, I'll have that video down below. With the aluminum release handle, it has a Bose audio sound system. Before we get to the back seats, let's just go over some of the things up front here. So starting with the steering wheel, I do like how it has these notches on each side, if you guys can see. There's a little indentation on the top section too, so you have pretty good hand positioning for however you'd like. Massive, massive column mounted paddles again. You have your Bluetooth and radio controls and everything like that. Not too much other uh, buttons on the steering wheel, which is nice to see. You have a lot more controls to the left side. You have your gas cap, trunk release, and parking sensors. More carbon fiber and it runs along the entire dash too, which gives it a really nice look. So just using that mode button on the left side of the steering wheel, you have a couple different things like your trip and your average fuel consumption, along with your tire pressure and heated seats actually show up there too, along with an RPM and TPMS light. So that's pretty much all you get in the center. And then moving over to the center screen, I'm pretty sure you just have Bluetooth and the compass there. On the far left, you have sport mode for the exhaust, you have an ice mode button too, so that'll just pop up ice. You have your parking assist and traction control, and then all the Bluetooth phone buttons in the center and your AC below that. So that's pretty much it for the center. Looking at the armrest, you have two cup holders down in the middle there. So two in front and two down there if you need it. A good amount of room. And then the glove box does have a lot more room to it as well. With the really nice leather seats. I love red interiors when the color is just right. You know, they're not too light and they're not too dark. All right, so getting in the back seats, I'm just gonna pull on this to fold the seat and it actually moves forward by itself, which is nice to see. And it's still moving. Wow, and it goes all the way forward, which is really cool to see. You also have a lot of seat adjustments too. I hope you guys can see that in my shadow there. There's a couple different buttons moving it left and right, obviously up and down. And I believe this is the heated seat adjustment. But look at how much room you have to just climb into the back here. And then I'm actually surprised uh, the bubble in the roof, while it doesn't look crazy from the outside, I'm 5'10 and I'm just barely touching the roof here. So I could easily sit here comfortably as far as leg room goes. We'll let the seat kind of come back into place here. Wow, so these are actually functional. I have the front seat set at my height 5'10 again, and I'm surprisingly comfortable. My legs are just up against the seat. so. Technically, these are actually very functional back seats. So when I said earlier that people wouldn't be back here, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not hunched in. My legs aren't really tight or anything like that. You have two cup holders and two air vents back here, which is nice. And then just another armrest in the center. So you actually have a lot of back seat room, which is impressive. I did not think that I'd be able to fit back here that, that comfortably. All right, guys, so now it's actually time to get this Maserati out on the road now. Just going 10 miles an hour here. I can already hear the exhaust rumble just a little bit. <laughs> that definitely sounds pretty good. I didn't got, get on it too crazy yet. Ooh. I know you guys can hear that. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds so good. F-Type that I was just in has the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters and you know they're obviously a lot smaller but something about having these large paddles here I think it just gives you more driver engagement I it just for from my opinion I love how large they are you easily know where they are going even turning like this I can easily upshift because it's not over to the side All right let's get on it a little bit more here This is definitely a lot of fun. I don't think it's as quick as the F-Type. It is a little underpowered compared to that car. Uh, but as far as putting a couple miles on this, starting off with the visibility, it's very easy to see all around. And then looking over your left and right shoulder, those windows do a great job that are in the back seats too. So it's very easy to see all around. And it's surprisingly open for a two-door coupe. Talking about the comfort, it's been a really smooth ride. There's no adjustments 
in the suspension or anything that you can do, uh, but it's been absorbing bumps really well. I like how it's handling so far. I haven't been able to get it out on some twisty roads or anything like that. I won't have the chance to do that. And it is very direct in the steering, just going back and forth here a little bit. As far as the interior goes, there's really not too much that you can control. You have that mode button that I showed you for the digital screen in the gauge setup. And then the center screen here looks to be like it's just for Bluetooth and a compass, along with your radio as well. Oh, they sound so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, they sound incredible. They don't pop as much as the F-Type. I shouldn't be comparing it to that car since they are completely different, but it sounds so good. I love that V8 rumble. Just something about that it sounds so good again. to the overall comfort of the seat. I talked about the suspension, but I really like how kind of low the seat sits right now. Uh, my elbows are comfortable on the center armrest and then the armrest in the door. So it, it kind of feels like you're sunken down just a little bit. Just kind of gives you more of a cockpit feeling uh, design to it. And it's kind of hard to word that, uh, but you're, you're down low and you got the steering wheel right up kind of chest level so it seems like the steering wheel is a bit higher and obviously i could adjust the seat but i do like being kind of hunkered down here yet i can still see the hood clearly uh, to you know to know where the car is i like the fact too that in this car it does have the back seat capability so while you you wouldn't probably use them all that much they are extremely functional as you saw me fit back there all right guys so we're going to do one last acceleration It's not crazy, crazy quick, but it definitely gets up to speed very well. You can feel the power just going, um, and it's very smooth in those shifts, upshifts and downshifts as well. So that about sums up my time behind the wheel of a 2016 Maserati Gran Turismo Sport. Huge thanks again to Maserati Lotus Greenville for providing this car for me. It is currently up for sale on their website, so I'll have a, a link to their website down in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and those downshifts as well. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next video.